Your dad's jizz is so cold. Greetings, listeners, domestic, international, and demonically possessed. I almost said extraterrestrial. <laughs> I'm Dave Reed. And I'm Kristen Riley. This is the Rotating Cast Files. Where we watch and discuss those TV shows that were canceled too soon. Today we are talking about Crazy Head, the season finale, series finale, season one, episode six, Beaver with a Chainsaw. I don't even know what that means. It was written by Howard Overman and directed by Declan O'Dwyer. That's right. Tonight, Amy and Raquel go into hiding for Halloween. After a bottle of vodka and a game of Jenga, it becomes apparent that they cannot trust even their closest allies. Amy faces her biggest challenge yet, and it is Raquel. Ooh. Wasn't the synopsis for one of the other ones, Can You Trust Your Friends? Yes. I thought so. Well, it's party time. Raquel's invite got lost in the mail, but Callum will surely find a way to make sure she attends his big demon coming out party. Oh, what's that one from? From Meta Witches. I like theirs better. Theirs is way better. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> a note. when <laughs> It's the finale when they finally hit their stride, is what I just kept thinking. They started strong, and then they're finishing strong. Yeah. It felt a lot like an extended pilot for most of the episodes. We don't know a lot of the rules still. <laughs> yeah. But we do have a better grasp on the characters and we can start to see their arc. Yes. Raquel, Amy, Tyler, and Jake are enjoying their trip to the shore. But Tyler can get that something's wrong with Raquel. He's worried. He's a good brother. Amy, doing what she learned to do in episode two... Yeah, she's riffing. Just lies terribly. What I want to know is, at this point, Harry took a bullet for Raquel. Amy should be trusting him at this point. Why would she make up a lie about them breaking up and him being a racist Nazi? Something that Harry cannot come back from if, you know, he heals from his bullet wound and was not a demon. Do you think that Amy thought through literally anything that was coming out of her mouth? I guess not. I'm just saying it's not good. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it may have. Harry and Callum are discussing the big plan in Harry's hospital room. Harry asks what will happen to Raquel, and Callum says there will be no reason to keep her alive after the ceremony. And when he said that, I was like, sh she was expected to survive birthing all of the demons of hell? The poster is not what actually was going to happen. You don't know. I do, because they talked about it. Oh. Like, the demons thought it was a dumb poster, because that's not... Well, it was a dumb poster. Yeah, and even the demons thought so. That's, I just how, that's thought... how bad of a poster was when demons were like, this is, this <laughs> no! is absurd. Demons have taste. Demon know, demons know bad graphic design when they see it. They also know misogyny, and they are apparently <laughs> offended by misogyny. But then they are misogynist. Yes. Callum, in this same conversation, is just... Yeah, the worst. Yeah. Also boring. Yes. Still. But he asks Harry if he has Stockholm Syndrome. Yes. Which, that's not how that works. No! Okay. Harry is not the hostage. Right! It's so stupid. He tries, not he. They try to make this all tie up together because it's crazy head. Are they crazy? Is this happening? Is it not happening? They're not good enough to be trying to tie these pieces together. I have never once thought that it was ambiguous whether or not this was happening. That's how they started it. That's definitely how half of the first episode was. But I'm not saying that I'm thinking that. I'm I, saying that that's what they've gone for. I don't think they have. I do. There's been a lot of talk about mental illness, bad, poorly handled. Yeah, but that's because the demons are trying to use that against the people who can see. The people are bad at it, too. I think all of the writers are bad at it. Yeah. So you're you're not getting my point anyway. But yeah, he says Stockholm Syndrome as if Harry is being held captive by Raquel. Makes no sense. It really doesn't. I did look up how, because I was like, Stockholm Syndrome is one of those things that we use in media, but isn't really a thing, right? So I asked you the other day what which source I should use without telling you what I was looking oh, for. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Remind me again, what were the two sources and what did I choose? One was something like, today I found out. 
And the other one was Cracked. Oh, yeah. Of course I picked Cracked. Yes. The other ones were like the Mayo Clinic, and I thought, that's boring. (laughs) I don't want an actual answer. (laughs) (laughs) So Cracked had an article titled, Stockholm Syndrome Kinda Isn't a Thing. And so I just pulled a little snippet out of that. According to the FBI, which has recorded how thousands of victims have responded to kidnapping interventions, victims rarely bond with captors to any notable degree. Maybe 8% of victims do, which is a number that I found on the sites that actually were reasonable sites. So 8% maybe. And I love this part from Cracked. And when you exclude those who side with their captors simply out of general hatred toward cops, (laughs) or because the negotiators suck at their jobs, the number drops a lot further. Yeah. If you include the movie Mad City, that number plummets. Considering how common trauma bonding is, it seems like kidnapping leads to less bonding with perps than just about any other kind of abuse does. Stockholm Syndrome has, in fact, never been an official medical condition with diagnostic criteria. It's largely a media term, not a medical one. Interesting. Read more cracked (laughs) Callum. Yeah. Did the entire concept come about because of Patty Hearst? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. I believe so. I believe that was... That's what I thought. That's where the media caught hold. I'm sure that there's been inklings in the literature going back. Like the concept existed before. Right. But the media really grabbed onto it with Patty Hearst. Okay. And that's why we all know about it. Right. If it was a diagnostic term that the media didn't care about, none of us would know what it was. We'd be like, I don't know. I like when they call it Helsinki Syndrome in Die Hard. Well, Gail, by this time, the hostages should be going through the early stages of the Helsinki Syndrome. As in Helsinki, Sweden. Finland. (laughs) Next, with Harry's consent, Callum smothers him with a pillow until Harry passes out. Callum, exhausting as always, takes a call about an ice sculpture being delivered too early. It's gonna melt. It is gonna melt. Now, I thought Charlie Archer did a good scene in this, or did a good job in this scene. Because he's just like, are you ready? He's like, yeah. (laughs) I thought he was good in this. Great. So do you think he passed out or do you think his demon body died and then he reinvigorated his demon body? I think you can stop breathing for a little bit and then be revived. And I think that's what happened. Okay. Raquel gets a call telling her that Harry stopped breathing. Who called? Okay. That's a good question. I have a similar question. Okay. Why did they bring their phones? They're supposed to be hiding out. Because everybody brings their phones. Not if you're hiding out. In a complete emergency where if you get caught, the end of the world happens, you won't leave your phone at home? I don't know. Outrageous to me. Yeah. What's more outrageous is that the hospital wouldn't have called. There's no way. Be smarter, Raquel. Your not-quite-boyfriend did not put you on all of his forms <laughs> as his emergency contact. And let's take it a step further. Okay, so he's asking about you. What weirdo would have already memorized your phone number? Because he doesn't have his phone. Hmm? No. Be smarter. Yeah, I've got something to say about Raquel's behavior at the very end. Meanwhile, Amy and Jake have yet another argument about Tyler, which I can't remember any little snide remarks from that. It's... Kind of background noise to me at this point. Wow, I don't even remember them having a yeah. <laughs> argument about Tyler. Raquel wants to race to Harry's side, but Amy is adamantly against it. It's too dangerous, and Amy's not above blackmail to keep Raquel from leaving. Amy says she will tell Tyler if Raquel leaves. That's a pretty big threat. It was. It's a big gun to pull. It was gnarly, too. I was having all kinds of feelings about the way she was doing it. Don't you bring him into this. Bitch, you're the one who's threatening to tell him. Yeah, in an extreme circumstance. I know, it was, it was pretty nasty. But I don't know what else she could do. She can't fight Raquel. No. So you have to do something emotionally manipulative yeah. to get her to do the right thing. Well, Raquel's not above drugging everyone there at the party. So she does. She crushes up a pill that both times we watched it, I forgot to write down the name of it. I looked at it this time. It's terazepine. Okay. I'm assuming it's a sleeping aid because... I I didn't write it down. Yeah. I didn't look it up. It's too late. We can't do it now. 
But she g- crushes up the pills, puts them in little shot glasses with vodka and hands out vodka as if to be like, all right, we're making up or at least we're pretending to make up whatever we're putting on airs. Now, and as then she, she says, let's Jenga, bitches. As she's handing out the shots, I noticed she has a bite scar on her arm. Oh, ha. Huh. <laughs> it's a good call. Good callback. Yep. It's like how every once in a while they would put a scar on Buffy's neck from where Angel bit her. <laughs> Sometimes she would have it. I do love that as they're playing, everybody's slowly just melting into the floor. Tyler drooling. He's drooling. He's... One of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> he was concentrating so hard, just drooling. <laughs> and <laughs> Amy's like, I don't remember Jenga being so hard. <laughs> <laughs> It's a pretty funny scene. It is. I do also love that the boys go out first. Yeah. Tyler loses because he basically melts into the Jenga tower and, <laughs> and knocks it over. And butts it. And then <laughs> lays down. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jake's like, you know what? You lost, you loser. I'm also going to lay down. <laughs> Amy doesn't quite get knocked out as fast. So she does see Raquel leave. But she also passes out immediately. Uh, Raquel rushes to the hospital. She spends a few minutes with Harry and he tells her that she shouldn't have come. Then she teases him about having a visitor because of the grapes. I want to know how she got there because she didn't drive. Tyler must have taken his car as well. Is Tyler's car still in the woods though? No, they drove it last episode. Okay. I think. They're like, it's going to come back. So yeah, I don't know. But Raquel sneaks into the hospital. It's a real weird scene, because I don't believe she would have to sneak into the hospital. He was getting visitors. She was there to visit him before. Why do you think she was sneaking? Because they did a little thing where, like, she turned her back as a nurse walked in, and then she went and grabbed the door before it closed. Oh. They made it seem like she was sneaking in. She's being careful because there's demons about. There are demons about. And apparently you can't see their faces if they don't want you to. Right. This episode. Yes. Amy wakes up and she wakes up Jake. They do not wake up Tyler and they both go get into Jake's car. She asks if he can drive, which obviously the answer is no, but he says something like he passed his driver's test with a near fatal dose of Mew Mew. Mew Mew. I don't know. He says what every high or drunk person says anytime when you ask them this. I'm a better driver when I'm on whatever they're on. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, sure you are, buddy. Then he immediately trashes his rearview mirror and scratches his whole car. And also, they barely make it to the hospital without an accident. A major accident. Yeah. They have a bunch of minor accidents. They annoy some people. Yeah. Raquel runs into Callum as she's leaving Harry's room. This is where I guess it's revealed that he's also her psychiatrist. I think last episode we learned that. On her way to the elevator, and he brings her to his office. She's trying not to go, but she's also being spoken to by an authority figure, and so she's also like, well, I guess I'll just go. Yeah, it's hard to tell authority figures no. And he knows that. Uh, He says he needs to talk to her about something, and once they get to his office, they chat for a minute about Halloween plans and Amy, and then he reveals his true self and drugs her into unconsciousness. And then it's this scene where I notice that his tie is so short and it distracts me the rest of the episode. Oh, yeah. I don't know what else he does. His tie hangs like above his belly button. Yes. It's a skinny short tie. Wild choice by wardrobe. Yeah. Before Raquel passes out, Callum tells her that Sawyer always said it was impossible for demons to father children. He has this whole thing thing that he says basically demons are so twisted and evil they kill their own sperm which is stupid that's what i did because you're twisted and evil i'm so twisted and evil callum's waited 800 years for someone like her she's as rare as a unicorn good for her but unicorns don't exist so she's rarer than a unicorn well she'd be less rare than a unicorn she's yes because she does exist right the opposite of what i said I just was thinking how I hated saying that word. Ugh. Unicorn? No. It sounds like Sawyer was originally evil and friendly with Callum and then became good or something. Yeah, I imagine when he fathered a child. Because you know how that really changes men. It does. It gives them purpose. (laughs) Or not. It's not my kid. (laughs) Raquel didn't notice Harry's cold sperm, though... In which they keep calling it sperm. You wouldn't notice the sperm. If it's just the sperm, <laughs> whatever. 
even though when she told Amy about demon semen, is that why they didn't say semen? Because it rhymes. No, they should have said it all the time. They would have liked that. I you think would, they you just would think, but I think Raquel, they just didn't know. Raquel always said demon jizz. Yeah. Well, either way, when Raquel told Amy about it in the pilot, it sounded like she had experienced it or knew about it or something. So, whatever. So what do you make of that? Okay, so Demon Jizz is cold. Apparently Harry's was not. Or she didn't notice. Maybe Demon that can get you pregnant Jizz is not cold. So maybe Sawyer's Jizz was not cold. Maybe. So either Raquel knows this or Sawyer told her. (laughs) Or her mom told her. I don't think her- (laughs) Your dad's Jizz is so cold. I don't think that happened. (laughs) Weird. Ugh. What if you only had sex with one person and that one person was a demon and you just thought that's how it was? Oh, that would be tragic. It would be so tragic. (laughs) You just didn't know any better. You're like, I guess this is one of the many things that they don't talk about. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, sex ed's real bad. (laughs) The demons bundle Raquel up and stuff her into a van to take her to the party venue. That's when Amy and Jake coast into the hospital parking lot asleep they're both fully asleep but they wake up just in time to see Raquel being kidnapped because the car slowly rolls into another car Jake was always such a safe driver too this is sad yeah it's like they forgot they forgot who Jake was it was like the one thing I appreciated about him for the rest of the episodes now you have nothing we'll see Callum is so excited about the upcoming demon ceremony and apocalyptic slaughter that he's hugging Raquel with glee. She tells him that she's not a toaster who will open up the gateway to hell on command when he pushes a button. And he says something else, but... (sighs) Well, he says, you forget, I'm your psychiatrist. Oh, yeah. I know everything about you. Which is a dangerous trope. And once again, I don't think this show is smart enough to make it a good joke. I don't think it's a joke. I think it's him being a menacing villain. What do you think the writers thought it was? Him being a menacing villain. Jake and Amy stop on the way to the party to get costumes, and they realize that everyone they know plans on attending. Jake rattles off a bunch of people we've never met and will never care about, and um, they all have nicknames. Jake's costume is incredibly strange. It's a bodysuit that looks like an orc, complete with like teeth that come up from under his neck. Yep. So he's definitely supposed to have an orc mask that have, you know, big teeth probably on his forehead or something. So he's like, rawr. But he has a demon mask. Specifically the demon from the flyer. (laughs) It is. Whatever. When you can't find your other mask, you wear whatever. I guess. Amy is wearing a black costume with black wings that she saw in her vision. Which, honestly, I would have just chosen a different costume. That's exactly what I was going to say. If you if you see yourself dying in this outfit, wear a different outfit. Put something else together. Come on, man. You're not even trying. Penguin or cow? Yeah. <laughs> Go you... put on that penguin costume. It'll be fine. That'll count. It will. All right. Amy's being kind of weird because she keeps thinking about her, her vision and how she knows she's going to die trying to save Raquel. She doesn't know if she's going to save Raquel, but she believes she's going to die trying. Yeah. So she goes anyway. Amy says something to the effect of she's not going to run away because her mom spent her life running away. And that is not how I understood it. I understood it as, you know, her mom was quote unquote crazy. So that would mean she's like talking about this stuff, not running away from it. She's like trying to confront it, but nobody around her would let her. Right. Amy's really going to have to grow up at some point and realize what really was going on with her mom. It's not going to happen in this episode. I I thought she had started to do that. Apparently, we're backpedaling all the way. Okay. But yeah, that was incredibly the wrong take. Although, if Amy's going to be stressed out, you say rotten things about people you care about when you're stressed out. But it was the wrong take. That's not at all what her mom was doing. So, Amy decides that she's she's going into this balls out, wind in her hair ready to die trying. Jake tries to talk her out of going at first, and then he's like, well, I guess if you're going balls out, then I'm also going. Yeah, you can't argue with balls out. I guess not. Balls out is the trump card. Why? 
Because they're in their 20s. It's like being <laughs> dared when you're a kid. It's bigger than a triple dog dare. <laughs> wow. All right. At the party, they wander around. Everybody's in costume. Lots of people are having fun. It looks like a pretty good party. Um, I do appreciate a costume party where people actually dress up in costumes. Yeah. It must say costume necessary on the flyer. It must, except we've seen the flyer a bunch of times and it's never had any information on it. Maybe it's on the back. <laughs> a real two-sided flyer situation. Yeah. They had a budget for this party. <laughs> while they're there, they wander around for a little while. They run into a couple of the people that Jake mentioned and Amy says Raquel must be in the back. So they go through a door and it's a little bit quieter and then they split up immediately, which I'm like... <laughs> They okay. split up immediately, and then Amy gets nabbed immediately. Yes, Amy runs into Callum, who turns her over to Mercy, who's still holding a grudge over her bra. So it must have been either a really comfortable bra, which is what I'm guessing. If it's her favorite one. Or an expensive bra. So I did a quick Google search when she said that, and I was like, what's the most expensive bra that's going to pop up? Prada for $2,350. Oh, so this isn't one of those diamond encrusted ones. No, I didn't look that far. But this is I was, like a real bra. It looked uncomfortable. It looked stupid. It looked like if you're going to spend that much money on it, you deserve to have your nipples fall out of in between the little lines. And it looked like your nipple's going to come out. Oh, okay. You deserve to have your nipple come out is what I want everybody to take away from this sentence. All right. Mercy gives Amy the mini Dementors kiss, and the soundscaping on this kiss is real X-Files throwback. Man, I didn't pay attention to it. They drop Amy on the floor unconscious next to Raquel, which doesn't make any sense because we've already decided that the Dementors kiss impacts demons, not humans, which is why Sawyer got KO'd, but Raquel didn't, and Amy should have been totally fine, if not maybe a little smitten for... <laughs> having a kiss. It does take them out of the fight for a little bit. Like Raquel needed a minute. Right, because she got pushed down the stairs. Oh, I guess that could have been why. Yeah. I took it as the kiss that did that, but it could have been the stairs, I suppose. <laughs> Callum wants Amy to watch the gates of hell open, which is why he decided not to kill her already. Uh, Raquel asks for a cigarette, which Callum says, I think I can do that. And he gives it to her. She takes one drag and then jams it into his ear. It was a good move. I it, liked it. It was. It was petty. <laughs> it was. It didn't accomplish anything. No. Nope. <laughs> it worked, though. It worked seamlessly. That was probably the best flawless back at you kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, Callum gets angry and says he's Boleros of the Ancient Ones. I wrote Belaros. Sure. Uh, who sprang from the loins of the Dark Lord himself. But he doesn't have a mom. Literally not how anything works. Uh -oh. So apparently the Dark Lord is a woman, which I'm here for. <laughs> okay. I don't think demons have gender, actually. They're in these bodies, so. Well, they're in human bodies. I know. Humans have a spectrum of gender. Which is fine. It's fine that the, the demons don't have a gender, but we don't know that for a fact or even a little bit because they we don't know anything about <laughs> the demons. We know they live in hell for hundreds of years and want to get out. We know that the Dark Lord can spring them from... Their loins. Well, the Dark Lord is a gendered term, so... It's true. And this whole thing is opening the gates of hell through a woman. I think it's coincidentally a woman. I don't. I think it's whatever gender the child of the demon would have been. Nope. Okay. <laughs> you're saying that women are too emotional? No. That's what it sounds like you're saying. What the hell? How the hell did you get to that? Because it's her emotions that open the gates of hell. And you're saying a man can't do that. Oh, my God. On his way out of the room, Callum tells Mercy to make sure her son is ready to be possessed when the gates open. Mercy doesn't look happy. She doesn't look happy from the moment she's in this episode. And I really like that. I do, too. She has waited for however long to be here. And now that it's here, she doesn't want to be here. Yeah. Lou Corfield read the script before she shot yes <laughs> she knew where it was going and she's like i'm playing this the, it's the same way that straight through yep it's really good it she, is she did a great job she did a phenomenal job also a great job is how callum says i am bella ross demon spawn blah 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 do we have any of that pain relief spray <laughs> yes <laughs> that was one of my favorite lines in the show 
Um, Callum tells her she'd better not be having second thoughts. He's talking to Mercy. Amy wakes up and Raquel apologizes. She'll listen next time. Amy accepts her apology, but says there may not be a next time. So then they have a really good conversation about the vision. Raquel asks if she's had a vision and Amy says yes. And Raquel says, is it you or me? And Amy says, it's me alluding to someone's either going to die, probably going to die, or at least be very injured. And Raquel is touched that Amy came anyway. As well she should be. I would be. Yep. Amy says that although there might not be a next time, she needed to come because they're friends. She, before she met Raquel, she thought she was crazy, and now she knows she's not. Yep. Which is huge. And they mean a lot to each other, which is good. Raquel says something about how we're weird. And Amy says, I like that about us. Yeah. That was really nice. It was very nice. It was a good scene. But now it's showtime. The key players are taken up to the balcony over the main party hall. Amy is chained to a, a nearby pillar. And Mercy and her son stand at the side. Raquel is chained between the two pillars, arms stretched out to her sides. So everybody can see her like an offering. And at the stroke of midnight, which is, I love that it's a countdown on a digital phone. It's a digital (laughs) countdown on a phone. I love that. Callum pulls, oh, he says, all right, go, show her. And the guy standing next to Raquel is wearing a demon mask. And Callum's like, show her already. And pulls the mask off to reveal, bum, 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 it's Harry. Yeah. And Raquel completely loses her mind. And I don't like it. I don't either. This is one of the problems I have with the show in general. They did not spend any time building this relationship between Raquel and Harry. No. There's no reason that we've seen for her to be this invested in him to the point where him just being a demon makes her lose her mind to the point where she freaks out and opens the gates of hell. They have laid this out. She is more upset about this Harry reveal after knowing this dude for one week than she was when her dad was murdered in front of her. Right. Which is why I thought it would have been way better if the demons had pretended to have kidnapped Harry and brought him out and murdered him in front of her. I think that could elicit being this upset because... That would be crazy. That would be... Yeah. Especially if you think that he's... You understand him to be a human watching somebody sacrificed in front of you. Yeah. A human, a human that you're having feelings for, that there's potential for. Yeah, I agree. That loss of potential alone is really damaging. Yes. That's a huge grief factor. Yeah. This... Being betrayed by somebody that you've known a week (laughs) that you know was stalking you. Right. Shouldn't be this devastating. No. I agree. I didn't like it. They should have murdered Harry. I would have liked that better because I don't like Harry. (laughs) (laughs) Well, also, the demon just goes to another human. It's not even a big deal for them. Right. Like, that requires no sacrifice on the part of the demons to do that. would be like, but I can't make this face with these eyes. (laughs) I'm sure there's an attractive dude out in the crowd. Go get in that guy. It's a whole crowd full of people who dressed their best. There's going to be somebody attractive out there. Do you think they get to pick or do they just get sucked into a body? And do you think it matters? I don't think it really matters to the demons. I wish we knew more about the demons. Yeah, me too. Although, I guess if you're a demon, you're in hedonism and shit like that, you'd want to be in an attractive body, probably. Attractive, some some sort of eye-catching. If you're not conventionally attractive, I could see wanting to be big or mysterious looking or something. Yeah. You want some sort of hook. Like a seven foot strong guy. That'd be fine. That, or even if you weren't conventionally attractive, but you ha- you could smolder. Mm, smolder. Yeah. You could look really mysterious. You could really work with that. Yeah. You don't have to be conventionally attractive to be actually attractive. Yeah. It's all about the sex appeal, people. That's right. And I think demons would probably be able to pull it off because what do they have to lose? They don't have any... They shouldn't have any... They can smolder from inside their heads. Any self-doubt or anything? Yeah. All the stuff that's holding us all back from smoldering all the time. (laughs) Yeah, so she loses it, and that's when the flames start pouring out and the demons start coming out. Now now we're seeing partygoers down in the crowd. 
becoming possessed, and Callum is loving it. Jake rushes at Harry and appears to knock him down into hell, and then wrestles with Callum. Yeah, so then Harry's not even going to be in any more of the episodes. So, like, if they were planning on a season two, Harry wasn't even going to be there. So you could have murdered that character. I would have. body. It just, it would have been better. I would have. Yeah. That's what I would have done. Amy tells Mercy she knows how to stop it, because Mercy's still over shaking the chains that Amy has on her. I don't know what she's doing. I don't know why she's standing there. Because Amy is still chained to the pillar, but the sound is like she's shaking. Uh, Whatever. One of the other demons took Mercy's boy, son, over somewhere else. And Mercy is concerned. She keeps looking over at him. He looks frightened. And Amy's yelling, I know how to stop it. I know how to stop it. And so Mercy finally lets her go. And Mercy goes to get her son and they escape to wherever. We don't see them again. Amy grabs Raquel who's snapped her chains and tries to talk her down. Amy tells Raquel that she's a strong, independent woman and quotes lyrics from Beyonce's single ladies. And then Amy tells Raquel that she doesn't need a man to love her. She especially doesn't need that awful, awful hill guy that she met last week because Amy loves her. And then I was getting, and now I'm getting all misty. (laughs) (laughs) I hate it because I didn't cry this whole thing. And then she's like, but I love you. You have me. And Amy kisses Raquel. Raquel settles down and closes the gate because really, what does everybody need to be fucking loved? Yeah. But not by Hill Guy. No, nobody needs Hill Guy. No. Callum has been beating up Jake, but lunges for Amy when he notices that the gateway is closed. He and Amy fly over the, the balcony railing as Raquel looks on in horror And we see the image of Amy falling that was in her dream, her vision. Callum is, when we kind of zoom out, Callum is impaled on a trident and lays twisted on the floor in a pool of blood. Amy lands in the same way that we've seen multiple times through her vision on the ground. Raquel looks over and thinks that Amy is dead. We all stop for a moment and then Amy opens her eyes. She does not have the wind knocked out of her. Well... She doesn't move either. (laughs) That's true. We see her move in a moment. So don't worry. She's okay. But the whole whole time I was like, you would be struggling to breathe. Your whole body would just (laughs) automatically be making those sounds. She did go unconscious when she hit the ground, but she landed on an inflatable zombie. So together, she, Raquel, Beyonce lyrics, and an inflatable zombie have saved the world. Yes. Were you ever worried about amy dying in this scene no i think in one of the visions we see her laying down and you can clearly see her laying on an inflatable thing and i was like oh okay well that's how that goes no the only time they got me was with the speech ah the rest of it i'm just like whatever we're here here we are but you weren't surprised by anything i don't think so Mm. i was surprised by what's coming up next okay the next morning amy wakes up in the canoe in the middle of the field outside of town that fucking canoe yep um i saw a reference to this from meta witches that said the canoe is this universe's answer to hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy's towel (laughs) (laughs) don't go anywhere without your canoe (laughs) and i was like yes i'm cute i'm adding i'm including that because very true raquel is still asleep she's sleeping in the car but jake is awake And he's looking back toward the city. Amy walks over to him. He wonders aloud how many demons made it into the world. Amy thinks there's somewhere between 10 and 50, which, good job counting so fast. I don't know. How would you know? (laughs) I don't know. Great. I'm glad that you at least have a goal number. Jake imagines the families waking up for breakfast who are about to be slaughtered and how the demons choose who's first. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. He points at her when he says Mo and reveals that he's possessed. She runs. Jake catches up to her in the woods. Okay. Lewis Reeves is so fast. He is very fast. <laughs> they had to keep doing quick cuts because he was just so fast. <laughs> he was very fast. Is that what you were surprised at? Well, I was surprised that Jake was a demon. Oh. That got me. When they did that reveal, I was like, oh, shit. I was like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> And actually, I thought it was a really good reveal, and they got me with that one. I do like the demon makeup still, or whatever it is, the demon effect. Jake and Amy are struggling in the woods. He's He straddles her and while and is just talking the whole time, and he's like... Oh, that's funny. You look 
like you were rolling your eyes at him talking the whole time. I was sitting here thinking, ooh, Lewis Reeves is showing range. It's the first time. Yeah, he is a different character now. And you can see, oh, this guy is an actor. Yeah. I did like that for this actor. Yeah. Because he did a good job with this. I thought it was good. But he even in whatever he's playing, he's talking too much. He's just running <laughs> his mouth. Uh, his phone rings while he's strangling Amy. He um, he also says something. Her phone rings. Her Okay, that's right. A phone rings. Her phone rings. He's talking about how he's been in the dark for hundreds of years and how time goes so slowly. And they always say that your first one is the best. And he's really excited to kill her. And because her phone's ringing, how does he know what a phone is if he's been in hell for a hundred years, hundreds of years? They must acquire the knowledge of the human that they possess. I guess. He says, whoever's on the end of, whoever's on this phone is next. Mm -hmm. But while he's, oh, and he has to answer it because it's killing his mood. Yeah. It's, it's a real downer. It really, it is. It's bringing him out of it. I can appreciate that. But because he's been chattering this whole time and not paying any attention to what Amy's doing, Mm -hmm. she somehow gets him to take the taser. The taser is her phone case. The taser is her phone case. I couldn't figure that out. At first I was like, how did they, what movie are we watching now that they can shock people through the phone? (laughs) (laughs) So the taser is the phone case. That seems... I think that's a real thing. Okay. Well, basically Jake tases himself in his own head. Which knocks him out, and Amy gets away, goes and wakes up Raquel, who was sleeping in the car still, and says, we have to do another exorcism. And Raquel's like, who? And she says, Jake. (laughs) And what does Raquel say? Prick. Yes. (laughs) Which is great. Because Jake is still out due to the taser, they can get him to a second location. They take him back to the exorcism warehouse. Raquel and Amy are in the car and they clarify that the love that they have for each other is as friends. Raquel misses Harry, but she should have let Amy shoot him. And Raquel says she can't help with the exorcism, which makes sense. It didn't go great last time and we have a revenant. Yeah, I have a question. I thought it was the exorcism that killed Suzanne, not Raquel being there. I thought... Raquel being there is what dragged Suzanne's soul back to her body. I believe that's what they said. Yes. So now you can do an exorcism and it's not fatal, apparently. It's cheating. Yep. So Amy goes to do the exorcism. She pees on Jake and gets the exorcism started because she knows how to do the exorcism now. Okay. Sure. Amy knows that it's Jake when he complains about the pee and she gives him a quick kiss and both of them look surprised. And what he says something like, oh, you're in love with me. Yeah. And I was like, no, she's just having a kissy day. She's just kissing everybody. She, she was. She kissed. She probably kissed Tyler earlier that day. She kissed Mercy. She kissed. I'm counting that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she kissed Raquel and she kissed Jake. It's just one of those days. It's just a kissy day. Yeah. It's just one of those days. <laughs> <laughs> so then... Jake, oh, Jake goes, doesn't show up again. We don't see him. Amy goes back to the car. Raquel asks if what happened, if it worked. And she said, oh, yeah, he's fine. He's drying his his T-shirt. And next that we see them, Amy and Raquel are have spent the last few weeks cleaning up the demon invasion. Um, we get to see them right after number 36 on their way to an old church with a demon infestation. They've mastered their demon hunting techniques, showing complete confidence when they confront eight or ten demons at once, and they're using Facebook to identify where demons are. Yep, Yep. Amy is still seeing Tyler. That's what they're talking about as they're going to the old church. Tyler wants to know what happens, what happened on Halloween, because, surprise, surprise, they left his ass once again. (laughs) After he passed out, after they all passed out from the spiked drinks, Everyone disappeared, so he woke up probably in his own drool. Alone, nearly drowning. Probably with his cheek in some cold drool. Not fun. No. As they, um, as we see Raquel and Amy walking into down the street toward the old church, we zoom out and see Suzanne watching from the rooftops, her decapitated head having been clumsily reattached to her body, and she's drinking blood from a two-liter soda bottle. Yeah. Okay. Suzanne was not decapitated. Suzanne was 
a puddle of mush. That's what I thought. And then when they showed her, I was like, did I just forget about a decapitation? No, they just, they're they, retconning something from three episodes ago. <laughs> yeah, you don't really have that kind of room. No. Clearly, this show would have been better as 12 episodes instead of six because they didn't get to dwell on anything. They didn't get to establish anything. They dwelled on the wrong things. Yeah. But like the relationship between Raquel and Harry, that wasn't long enough Mm -mm. for any of this. No, they focused too much on the what they considered to be the fun banter Uh, and yeah, and not enough time on world building and storytelling so much time on callum and his really bad monologues yes yeah it was too much time wasted on mediocre dialogue yeah it's rough yeah it's rough and retconning suzanne being alive or dead if she's gonna reconstitute her mushy body fine but then she doesn't need to have the line on her neck right that's i uh It was a choice, and we disagree with it. Yeah, they're clearly trying to set up season two here. Yeah, they obviously are, because even the the last shot, Amy and Raquel are together, Amy and Tyler are together, Jake is not mentioned even a little bit. No, not really. So he could show up or not. Suzanne comes back. But basically, they, in the last five minutes, they let us know where everyone is in the world that we need to know about. We don't know about Mercy and her son. Right. They got they got away. Callum is his human body's dead. Harry got knocked into hell or whatever. Yeah, so he's that demon's just gone. Yep. But with all the demons that escaped in season 2, um Raquel's dad could be back. Right? There's definitely things that they could do in season 2. Okay, so for our final lesson, do you think the show was canceled too soon? I, no. I'm leaning no as well. I don't. I think that they focused on the wrong the things. wrong things. Yeah, I was thinking before this episode. I was thinking, yes, you get a writer's room going, so it's not all on Howard Overman, so he doesn't have to write every single thing. Maybe he's the showrunner, but other people are involved. Maybe some Ugh. queer people. Oh my god! You get a decent writer's room together, then yes, uh, this should keep going. But after this episode. They can know that they just made a couple huge missteps, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I don't think they built the world significantly enough for me to need to know what happens next. Yeah. So speaking of what happens next. Yes. What are we doing next? Well, we hinted about it. I mean, pretty much said it right out. But we're going to be doing HBO's Carnival. Yes. I can't believe how the finale went. So we've seen Carnival. I've seen it multiple times. You've seen it once, and we're going to be doing it. We know that it's a great show. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. We'll do our, you know, final, did it get canceled too soon at the end. But uh, I don't think our answers are going to change. Well, if anybody from when we were doing The X-Files is listening, you know how I feel about the finale of Carnival. (laughs) Uh, It's streaming on HBO Max. We have the DVDs. So I believe I'm going to listen to some commentary tracks get some good insight on the episodes and stuff and it's can't good. wait to hear what you bring to the table it it is going to be a heavy show though yeah it is not it's fun but there's some heavy stuff in it uh, we're going to be putting content warnings in the descriptions for everybody yep so stay tuned for that that first episode should drop next week yeah we're going right into it all right so any last Any final words before we put Crazy Head to bed? It had promise. It didn't quite live up to it. Great soundtrack, though. Great soundtrack. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. Liked all the actors. Yeah. Even ended up liking Louis Reeves. Yeah. I would watch him in something else. Yeah. I would watch all of these guys in something. I've seen Susan Wacoma and other stuff. I've not seen Kara Theobald in anything. I don't think. Hmm. And uh, We know I don't remember anything I've ever seen. (laughs) Right. Okay, so... See you next week at the Carnival. The Rotating Cast Files is produced by Kristen Riley and Dave Reed. Edited by Dave Reed. Thanks for being here, and if you enjoyed the episode, please rate, review, and subscribe. If you could go to Apple Podcasts, and please, please, please go rate and review us. Give us five stars. Tell us that we're doing magnificent things. 
Tell us that we are doing the impossible with podcasting. Wow. We would love you for it. Or even easier, tell people about us. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Cast Files. We also auto post to YouTube. So if that's your streaming service of choice, or if you like closed captions, they are available there. And finally, email us at therotatingcastfiles at gmail.com. 